these no LuraTech already, some are new. So to give you a short overview here what LuraTech is all about. So LuraTech is headquartered in Germany here in Berlin, but we also have offices in the United Kingdom and in the United States. Our key competence, and this is where we work on, and it's here in capital letters, that's what we do, solutions, software, and support for document conversion, so converting document, document formats, business documents, things like that. So we started nearly 20 years ago with image compression, then we moved on to document compression with a focus on scanned documents and extended this also together with PDFA and the success of PDFA in the world to uh, what we call the bond digital documents. So this is the key uh, special and knowledge of LuraTech. The product families are two main product families. The one which is in the center today is our LuraTech PDF compressor enterprise. This is also what Armin will show in a demo later on. So this is a, a server tool which allows to convert to create PDFA files, especially for the topic of today from emails. And our second product family is Dockyard. This is a complete managing, managing platform for document conversion, but this is not the topic today. But if this is interesting for you, we're also happy to provide information on that. So when we come to the topic of email archiving and management, then I would like to do a little bit classification or terminology. So you may have different words for that, so that's just to also to make sure <coughs> that we're talking on the same words or have a similar understanding. So I or we like to split into two groups, which on the one hand is what I call email archiving. Email archiving is on the one hand typically a hardware-based solution. So this is really typically a hardware box which is sitting at your entrance door or shop behind the entrance door and every incoming mail is recorded there. So whether it's a real business mail or whether it's spam or a virus <coughs> and depending on your organization, on your company, this may also simply be necessary in order to um, fulfill the compliance requirements of your organization. For what I would like to call the business mails, so the mails which are really content, which are really around the business with your customers, with your business partners, with your suppliers and so on. This is what we will present to convert those and why this is good to convert those to PDFA as a document conversion in order to sell, have a safe and long-term secure business document. Email management is a little bit more, but um, we will not cover this in detail today, but just to mention it, and obviously if you go for an email archiving project, then this is part, and this is what you will obviously do, so it involves obviously organizational points, how do your employees should handle emails, do you want to manage emails centrally, or do you leave it to each employee, whether he considers an email important enough to bring it to the archive or it's just a nice information mail. You may want to set up email policies or you have them already in place and obviously it's part of a larger business workflow where you want to steer all the things. <coughs> in general and a lot of customers, also our customers who are doing this already, integrates this obviously in a complete digital mailroom solution. So obviously on the one hand you have the classic paper letters which come into your organization, into your company. This is also true for fax. And from a broader perspective of what I would call input management, then this is just another source. So email and we all know it's more and more every day. So emails are also now incoming documents, business documents, which needs to go into the archive. We have some technical aspects, which are more the IT administration, like security, like spam handling, like private mails. And after the input management solution or setup configuration, then or very often customers want to integrate this into a complete digital folder application. This may be a, an ECM system, so for enterprise content management, so where the 
normal employee who is not the IT specialist, he wants to work with your customer, maybe your bank or insurance, and he wants to see all the documents, all the communication with the customer, which and it doesn't matter for him whether this came via normal paper mail, whether this was an email or whether this was a fax. So this is something you will obviously consider and do in a general project anyway. A little bit on the legal background, but this is obviously depending on your country, your government. So just to give you some samples from a German rule, and it's a newer one, so it's a draft version, but there have been former versions, but I think it's um, some interesting points and uh, which I want to describe here briefly. So what's called GUBD in German is the recommendations and requirements for digital documents and there are some interesting points in there. The one which is explicitly stated there that emails can be converted to PDF. So this is also very important or any in-house format. So as long as it is machine readable. And this is the second point, and this is an interesting point, at least in Germany, but just as an idea also for your application. So in Germany, this recommendation clearly says that the email or the digital document, more general, must remain machine readable. So if it's a digital document with digital or machine readable, it's not allowed to rasterize this anymore, which when you take TIFF, for example, makes it a dump pixel document again. So this is one rule which may be interesting. The other one which is more a side issue, but I think it's also interesting. So the German recommendation says if the email is just a transport vehicle, for example, you send an electronic invoice as a PDF and you just use the email for transport, then there's no need to archive the transport system. But obviously you have to archive the PDF invoice, <coughs> so this is one, but then obviously you have to be a little bit careful. On the one hand, if it's really just the transport, then it's fine, but if I send you a proposal and the pro I write in the mail, if you order until end of September, you get a 5% discount, and this mail content is again a business document, which you need to archive. For the Technical level, you know it, but just to recap it briefly, so emails at the technical level, <clears throat> so basically have three parts. The one is the header information, so header is the sender, the receiver, the date, the time, things like that. But also when we talk about email archiving conversions, this is important metadata and this should be retained and you want to retain, keep this and Armin will show later how this works. Then in an email you typically have the body, so this is a text I am typing, you are typing, the users are typing, so this can come in various flavors, old ASCII style formatted text or HTML which you typically know from newsletters. <clears throat> and then comes a difficult part of the story, the whole world of attachments, I like to call this the format zoo, so everything which can come in, whether it's nice or not, but you never know what your business partners will send you, so obviously it's uh, office documents like Office documents, Microsoft Office, Open Office, LibreOffice, it will be millions of PDFs or are already, but it may be also more difficult stuff like CAD files and other things where some application created its own proprietary file format, so this is something you want to handle, you want to cover and then you also know it's a good case of executables where we really get some kind of program, but on the other hand, maybe also bad things like viruses and it may be packaged, <coughs> which is more for transport, so then part of the conversion is to really split it off to unpack it because then in the normal business workflow we want or the employee wants to work with a single documents and do not want to unzip an archive. For the general recommendation, and this is also a lot of or best practice as we have done this with a lot of customers already, so the dual strategy is approached, so the general requirements or broad requirements are integrity, visual, visual reproduction so that you can always recreate this email even in 20, 50, 100 years from now and the proven idea is to really have a dual strategy to really go for two ways 
The one is to really save the email data stream, so this is an original binary format. As I mentioned in the beginning, the hardware box helps on that, So, but you really store it, you store everything, the spam and the virus, all those things. This depends a lot on, on your company, so if I take Luratech as a small company, we do this no, only for a limited time, so we have a what's that, round robin principle and keep the mails for three months and then they are gone and if something <coughs> is lost then we expect and it happens a user or a business partner will contact us again. This may be totally different if you're a bank or if you're in insurance and you have very strong compliance rules and that they may be simply necessary for compliance reasons to archive everything, every ingoing and every outgoing mail just in case there's a lawsuit, which we don't hope, that you have to prove you never received this mail or you sent this answer, things, more legal things like that. For the logic, for the business logic, for the document management system, the second, and this is a way to have really readable documents, is well, very simply speaking, digital prints out. So this is the idea to convert the emails to PDFA, convert the attachments, if possible, not everything goes, video, but we'll see, PDFA3 offers opportunities, and if possible, we also recommend from an organizational point of view that you try to limit the formats with your business partner, so if they send you a cut file and you don't have this CAT application, then <clears throat> this is part of the policies where you hopefully can agree that they don't send it and even, or I know a lot of CAD programs, so most of them create, can create a usable PDF or a readable PDF file and that's likely what you want to receive and then you have a good way to archive this and to convert this to PDFA. Also, a practical experience that this conversion should be done yeah, today, so as soon as possible, not six or nine months from now, because if there is any technical issue, so it's an unknown proprietary format or <coughs> anything, the attachment is destroyed and not readable at all, then it's better to discuss this with your supplier or document supplier now and not in six months because then he may have totally forgot what he sent you and maybe hard to archive this. So this is the point. There's also an experience because this world of emails is very open so you can receive everything, nice and ugly things. So <coughs> you will not immediately reach a 100% perfect conversion. This is more a learning curve where <coughs> you start with a high level or typically start with a high level 95% and then <coughs> you get used to that and then over the time it's really an automatic conversion of emails in the background. PDFA, yeah, you saw the introduction movie, so once again very short, so PDFA is a ISO standard for long-term archiving of documents, so to create a safe digital preservation of this document which can always be reproduced as a business document. PDFA was or became an ISO standard already in 2005, which is nearly 10 years now and has a broad acceptance all over the world in between and further ISO calls it parts, extensive functionality. So on the one hand, the ISO already set in 2005, PDFA will in this version or in this part will never become invalid, which is also an exception for the ISO. On the other hand, they said, okay, the world moves on, there are some technology things which are good and senseful for archiving and we will adapt them in a senseful manner and this is what the ISO steers or controls we are part, so there was PDFA-2, which is a handful of senseful improvements and then PDFA-3, which is as we will see in a minute, just one feature, but offers a lot of new use cases and applications. So these are the goals, to have a real safe long-term document. You can, as PDFA or PDF itself is a modern format, you can handle metadata, you can have full text searchability, you can have the semantic structure and it's always recreatable. One look to PDFA3, so I showed my PDFA3 file which we are just looking at in the beginning. So this is a <coughs> newest part but already two years 
available for now. The idea was to say PDF has always or for a long time been something like a container. So this was possible with normal PDF already five or ten years ago. So you could use PDF as a container and this is an idea which went into PDF A3. So it became the third part. For technical people like Armin, this is boring, so it's only one feature. You can embed any file and that's it. <clears throat> but from the point or from the application point of view, there are a lot of new application areas which are possible. So on the one hand, which is a very famous one here in Europe, so all the European countries are discussing electronic invoices is also a, not, not, not only a recommendation, it's a requirement by the European Commission to introduce and allow electronic invoices, especially from the government point of view. So the base idea is very similar to the one I showed you in the beginning. On the PDFA side, you have the typically invoice, as you all know it for 20 years. So you look to the PDF invoice, you can print it, you can check it, and you can pay it manually. But it includes an XML file, which has the structured invoice data. And if you don't want to do it manually, then you can take the XML file, bring it into typically your ERP system, and like SAP, and the ERP system will create and uh, process the invoice automatically on the machine level where just maybe the payment process is still a manual thing to do. And the same idea is true for emails, so that's also, and that's what we have as a focus here, the email conversion to PDF A3, so you can on the one hand embed the source file, so you can embed the complete .msg if it's a Microsoft Outlook server or if it's another mail server, it's typically a .eml file. And you can also, or on the other hand, you can split off the attachments. Armin will show this in a minute. And there's also a nice solution now for what was not really possible before PDF A3. So you all know this case. You receive an email with a, an attached PDF. The PDF itself has a digital signature. So if your company um, strategy is already to convert documents to PDF A, you can do it. But even if it's only a technical conversion, the signature breaks and this is not really what you want because <laughs> this is uh, you want to keep the signature and this is also very easy now so you can create a safe and technical good PDF A file and you just embed the signed PDF which you received. Now we come to the practical part from Armin, so he will show you the PDF compressor uh, things or attendees who know PDF compressor and LuraTech for quite a while and one thing is that we made it much simpler especially for the topic of email conversion there are a lot of things and improvements in the engine so but now I'm happy to hand over to Armin and he will show us practical how this works Okay, thank you very much, Thomas. And uh, for the practical presentation, um, just to be able to handle this here in the scope of the webinar, we have only two test email messages. Uh, the one is in the EML format, uh, which is used by many popular uh, mail clients such as Thunderbird. So if I double click it here on my machine, it will open up in Thunderbird and you will see three attachments. One is the presentation as currently being shown by Thomas. The other one is a Word document basically representing a, a fax to be sent and the third one is uh, just a plain old Excel spreadsheet with uh, a few numbers, different fonts, colors and uh, two diagrams actually. So. Uh, that's the one example and actually the second example is pretty much the same document but saved from Microsoft Outlook in the MSG format which is preferred or which is the standard format for Outlook to save such messages so you see it here uh, just a very trivial email body and the three attached documents. In order to convert these two messages to PDF-A with PDF compressor, 
I have prepared uh, several jobs. Actually, preparing such a job is about as easy as taking uh, taking this folder and just dropping it in here. Okay, so just by dropping it here, you get this as an input folder. Um, but I'll remove that one here once again. And uh, this first job is named PDF A1B because it creates PDF A1B output. And it takes this uh, folder containing the two email messages and all you have to select down here is email as an input format. So you don't have to select the formats of attachments to convert along with the email body specifically, no matter whether it's uh, Word, Excel, or PowerPoint, or some other supported formats, this will all be converted along with the email message. And actually, let me start this right now because it will take a second to process. You see down here the progress messages in PDF compressor. And uh, I have two more, two further jobs uh, prepared here one creating PDF A2 and the third one creating PDF A3. And the reason for those several jobs, each of which writes to its own output folder here, but they all consume the same input messages, is that um, I want to show you the standard settings in PDF Compressor for converting the attachments. Well, Thomas has uh, already elaborated on this the different levels of PDF A support different means of converting email attachment. This first example is PDF A1. The B does not really play an important role here. Um, and you see there are no attachments to this PDF document as PDF A1 does not allow for other documents to be attached to the main PDF document. What you see, on the other hand, is that this document contains 16 pages because the three attachments have been converted to PDF pages and then simply been appended to this document. You see here the presentation and if we scroll further down, you see the Excel document, okay? And in order to be able to distinguish between the three attachments, i.e. figure out where one attachment ends and the other one begins, we do have this bookmark structure here, where for each attachment, well, the first bookmark obviously points to the email body. This is this, is this one first page. And each of the other attachments points to the first page representing the attachment within this PDF document. Okay? So that's our recommended representation of emails converted to PDF A1. Um, matter of fact, because the second email looked pretty much the same in its original format, of course, the uh, converted format looks pretty much the same as well. So this serves just to demonstrate that EML and MSG formats can be converted uh, equally well. Uh, one more thing, actually you see some header information here from the original email. Uh, you will also notice that this is an email I sent to myself, which does not really matter. And uh, what you also see here that these two email addresses are embedded as clickable links. So if I click on one of them here, I'll again be prompted to send just another email to myself, uh, this time using Outlook. Uh, but I won't do this for now, just to demonstrate that this content is also preserved in the PDF A version. So, you may have noticed I started the two other jobs as well, and there's even two further ones I can start right now, but let's go here to the PDF A2 folder. Again, two pretty much identical versions of the message, but uh, for a change, this is PDF A2, and because PDF A2 supports attachments as long as they are PDF A documents as well, we do have the original emails attachments converted to PDF A 
and embedded as attachments to the PDF document. So what you see here under this uh, paper clip icon uh, is a PDF A representation of this Word document originally and uh, just the same for the, the Excel spreadsheet. And so this PDF A document in itself contains only one page and all the other contents are attached as PDF A documents in their own right. If you look here, you'll see once again it's PDF A, PDF A2 to be exact, and therefore no real need here to uh, have further bookmarks, but again you have clickable links also here in the main part for each of these attachments. And again, the second message looks pretty much the same, so I won't bother showing you that in more detail. And for PDF A3, we do have two output documents. And um, again, just to show you quickly, PDF A3U. And here we do have attachments uh, to be uh, inspected with the paperclip icon. Uh, and we do have them in their original format. As uh, Thomas told you earlier, uh, PDF A3 supports embedding documents in arbitrary formats, so they don't have to be converted to PDF A as well. And therefore, we do have these documents in their original format. Double-clicking them prompts me quickly in Adobe Reader, but then opens the original attachment in Excel as an Excel spreadsheet. And uh, since this is our recommended best practice, we still have all the contents converted to PDF pages. So again, this document has 16 pages and it does have this bookmark tree pointing to the beginnings of the PDF A representations. But in a way, you have the best of both, both worlds as you have durable uh, PDF A representations for long-term archiving in one document and on the other hand you do have the original attached formats where for example uh, the formulas of, a, of an Excel spreadsheet are still uh, visible and editable within Excel and also for example animations which would not survive the PDF A conversion in the PowerPoint presentation can still be uh, can still be invoked using uh, Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay, and um, this is, as I said, this is uh, the standard procedure as uh, used in PDF compressor where you simply distinguish in choosing different output formats here uh, on this output page of the job properties in PDF Compressor. So what happens if you um, don't uh, want this exact schema of conversion? Say you would like a PDF A3 conversion, but you would like all the attachments um, embedded in PDF A2 style that is converted to PDF A attachments in their own right. Well, under output here, we do have this email conversion options button, uh, which is only active uh, if the born digital conversion option of PDF compressor is installed. So if, in you, if it is not activated in your copy, um, you should check whether you have uh, here email chosen as an input format and whether the born digital conversion option is installed on your machine. And if you click this button you get yet another settings dialog and here you can distinguish between the default conversion which is basically what I've just shown you so far. Uh, you do have another option to basically ignore all attachments. So if you have uh, a volume of emails where you say well we know that everything appended to this email these emails are executables or maybe even viruses whatever. At least you know you don't want to preserve those in PDF A format, then you can choose, choose to simply ignore them. And then you have this specific conversion where you can distinguish, of course depending on the output format chosen here, you can distinguish between 
uh, embedding them as their in their original format, i.e. embedding a Word attachment as a Word document, embedding them as PDF attachment, i.e. embedding a Word document uh, in a version converted to PDFA, but still as an attachment to the PDF document, or embedding them as PDF pages with bookmarks. And as you see here, I can cho choose all of them simultaneously, which is, of course, not really recommended as it keeps multiple representations of the same document uh, in the output and, of course, unnecessarily enlarges the output, okay? And then you do have still more options to filter how to convert uh, the attachments, uh, meaning you can enter uh, file extensions for the formats to process or to ignore. You can see this here. If I switch to that job, uh, I do have uh, Doc, XLS, and PowerPoint selected as formats. And if, for example, I say as XLS X here, then the Excel spreadsheet, which was saved in a different format, would not be converted and attached to the PDF output. And then further down, you can even uh, you can specify in more detail which attachment formats not only to include or exclude, but also which ones to convert to PDF in the process. So uh, if I run this quickly, you will see that here I will end up with uh, a PDFA document that has only two of the attachments because I ruled out the XLS document, okay? The Word document has been converted to PDF and attached in this shape, whereas the PowerPoint presentation still remains in its original format. So you do have really a host of different options to convert here and uh, hopefully I'm not confusing you if I show you yet another option which is uh, was used in this job which I ran a little earlier in the background and here I say, uh, sorry, I say ignore the attachments but I use this more general option to embed the entire input file. And in the output folder, here the output goes to the original folder here. Oh, come on. Um, and here the output PDF file contains the entire original EML file. So if I double click this EML file, I can still open it in... Uh, in uh, Thunderbird and this version still has the originals attached in their original shape and this is uh, not really specific to the email conversion but you can basically do that with every kind of file you convert to PDFA so that's how Thomas created for example the PDFA document with the PowerPoint attachment uh, shown right at the beginning of this webinar. So uh, again, I hope this wealth of options has not confused you, but we are, we are very confident that uh, we address almost every conceivable uh, shape or, or case of converting to PDFA with these options. And we do have quite a few customers already which use various combinations of these options. Okay, thank you very much so far, Thomas. Did I... Uh, miss anything or, or did I leave anything unclear or unexplained? No, no good, thank you Armin. So I hope I showed uh, <clears throat> the technical flexibility and yeah, hopefully it did not confuse you No, but uh, what you should have seen, which obviously needs a little bit more details than when you really technically do it, so that's what you have seen as a lot of options all options and just to give you at least my personal opinion I think this is somewhat as a base decision whether you want to to go for PDFA1 which is I would call the straightforward day forward way so just have the PDFA file and if your business your logic is happy with that then that's fine I'm personally a PDFA3 fan so I love to really embed this, embed also the original formats <coughs> and PDFA2 is a little bit intermediate I would say. So this is something which also depends on your business requirements and 
um, you have an idea about that, which is a not too extended thought. I would say it's just a thinking of half an hour, and then as I mean, showed all the flexibility which PDF compressor can handle here. So I mean, showed this all interactive, just to also give you an, a demo and introduction. But obviously, when you really do it in your organization, when you go into production, then this is an automatic background server job. So which you basically do not want to touch and typically it's really also not necessary so customers are doing that so all the incoming mails you have your mail server which is Microsoft Outlook for the MSG files or any other one with typically EML files all those files as Armin showed can go into PDF compressor PDF compressor will do the conversion in the background and then you have the converted PDFA files, business documents for your workflow up until they come or reach your archive at the end. So this is what is happening. As I said, it's not always 100%, but uh, our customers are doing this for a while and so you start maybe with 95%, you have a learning curve uh, for some weeks, maybe months, and then you should come into the area of 99 dot, uh, what's that, dot x percent and, but some special exotic case may always re remain because you never know what your business partner's kind of attachments or emails will be sent to you. For using the PDF compressor, so just to give you an overview about the possibility, so we think we have a quite flexible license model here which can address multiple requirements, whether you're a small company or a very large organization, so on the lower level, but this is typically more interesting for scanned documents where you have to convert or want to convert one million pages or 10,000 paper folders and then the job is done. So this is where we have this what we call the one-time model. So you have a license for one million pages and then when the job is done, the license is also done. For email, because it's typically part of the digital mail room of kind of a rendition server in the background uh, beyond or after you're sitting, uh, what's it, sitting after or beyond your ECM system, then there are the, what I would call the ongoing models, which is typically this, our standard model, so there's this PDF compressor server, this goes per CPU core, so the standard license is for one CPU core, and if you have high volume and we have customers who are doing this, this may end up to 20, 30, 50, so if you have, I don't know, 100,000 mails or even more to do at one day, then obviously there's a little bit of hardware power needed to do the conversion, but this is just hardware, so <clears throat> this is handleable, and if you are a small or medium company, then we offer what we call the advanced model, so advanced gives you pages in time, so if you know I have approximately 1 million email pages per year, then this is a very fitting and more cost effective model so that you have this license and then you can do the job on this thing. Yeah, to come 45 minutes are also over, so this is a summary and we hope we could demonstrate and inform you that PDFA is a very good thing for secure or long-term archiving of emails. We touched a little bit the overall topics of email management, so we want to look for policies. <clears throat> we recommend that you complete or integrate this into your complete email management, so this is a little larger project, but very sensible, and when you go for that, so then you have the born digital options, so obviously you can also convert internal documents, documents which are born digital in your organization from other departments, and they can also become and synchronized in your archive to PDFA, and then you really, and this is what Armin showed you, you have one email when you use PDFA3, or even the straightforward way, then you really have one file, one simple .pdf, and this contains the whole email, so there's really one good archive object, so you can always access this, have the whole context together, and no need to, <coughs> to collect this in multiple systems or link them together with, for example, the attachments. So if you hopefully want to move on with that, then we're always happy to we're always happy to send you a test version of PDF compressor with a born digital 
module as I said many customers and some of them really for years like a large German bank Hillerbar or uh, what's that uh, ooh, Spedition which is Kühn and Nagel are doing this for quite a while very successfully they are through this learning curve so it really runs automatically in the background. What I also want to mention, I uh, just read it in the morning, the hopefully final version, so it's not ready today, but likely in the next or within two weeks, we created or marketing created a nice white paper about email archiving, so this is also, I think, a very interesting background reading or information on this topic, so please look for this in one or two weeks or contact me for, and then we will have, be happy to send this for you. So before the end of the webinar, last question to Armin, whether there are now open questions which we can immediately answer. Um, I see two questions here. Um, the one is uh, whether the PDF compressor is also able to um, copy other file formats from an input folder to the output folder without modifying them or uh, converting them to PDF. Um, that's not possible at present. Uh, I think we have seen this request before, but basically um, the PDF compressor's main purpose really is to convert to PDF and therefore uh, this would be an additional feature to be able to copy uh, associated files along to the output folder. But I think we do have this as a request and if it is a really important issue, we can probably add this as a feature. Um, then there is the question whether there is a Linux version av available. Um, at present, no. Uh, the actual core PDF compression SDK is available for different platforms including Linux, but this uh, GUI service application is only available for Windows, uh, but on the other hand for all kinds of Windows systems. So I'm showing, or I did show it to you on a, a Windows 7 professional, but it's uh, tested, regularly tested and released and run on everything from Windows XP up to Windows 8.1 and of course all the uh, corresponding Windows Server versions. Okay, that's the questions uh, so far. Again, if you have further questions, don't hesitate to contact us via email and either uh, send us your input documents to convert for you as a showcase or ask us for a download link and we will send you an, a demo version which uh, apart from very few restrictions works pretty much the same so you are able to convert your documents and see the results before uh, before your buy-in before acquiring even a limited license okay thank you very much and uh, hope to see you again in the course of some future webinar yes thank you Armin also thank you for your attention from me Depending where you are located, have a good day or have a good evening and we hope we stay in contact. Thank you and bye-bye.